All right, I think we're just going to get started. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you for coming to our panel today and welcome back if you're coming from part one. Um, so we just want to say a thank, quick thank you to Pierce Canada for sponsoring this Tuesday talk series. They have a lot of useful um, digital study tools and resources that you can use during first and second year. So um, make sure to follow them on their social media to get study advice, um, post-secondary tips from other students and join their student community. Um, before we begin, please mute your audio and just note that we are recording this webinar. So if you aren't comfortable with your camera on, you're more than welcome to keep it off. Um, and I am your host for today. My name is Chloe. I'm also a Mac student going to my fourth year in chem. So I'm looking forward to what all of our panelists have to say. Here's our agenda for the next 45 minutes. We'll go over who LEAP is and what we're doing this summer. Um, we'll also introduce our four Mac panelists and then dive right into the panel discussions with some questions that you guys submitted. And we'll end off with a Q&A period. Um, so if you can try to hold off um, your questions until the very end. Just going over an overview of who LEAP is, we are a Canada, uh, Canadian registered nonprofit and student run organization, and we aim to help high school students ease their transition to post secondary through webinars, mentorship programs, re and resources. You can find a lot more information on what we do um, on our website here at leapcanada.org. And if you're looking to learn more about the industries that you're interested in and gather some valuable skills, um, check out our Pathfinder program at leapcanada.org slash Pathfinder. And by attending this webinar, you're automatically entered into our giveaway. Um, you can win points by coming out to more webinars, asking questions, and filling out our feedback form, which will be sent at the end. Um, we've got $400 worth of prizes to be won, so come out to as many webinars as you, as you can and ask all the questions you have, because who knows, it might just win you some prizes. Um, to start off, We'll start with Alyssa. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, hi everyone. My name is Alyssa. Um, so I entered my first year through the Life Science Gateway, and I am now in my second year specialization in honors in psychology, neuroscience, and behavior. That's also known as PNB. Um, a couple things I won't mention, or I'll maybe go into a few of them. Um, I'm part of Sci Sections radio show. So that's actually a radio show that's on campus. Um, Jose McMaster, part of the medical terminology um, section. And I'm also a, a Mac with STEM, so a women in STEM mentor. And I also have a job on the side of Kumon Math and Reading Center. And a couple of my hobbies are soccer, volleyball, and playing piano. Thank you, Alyssa. I'm excited to hear about Sci Section. <laughs> um, Fiona? Hi everyone, my name is Fiona. Um, I'm going to my fourth year of Honors Life Sci, and I'll just briefly go through some of my experiences. Um, so I'm doing a thesis this year under the um, Pediatric Ophthalmology Department, um, which is like Pediatric Eye Care um, under the Health Sciences Department. I was also um, Humanity First um, McMaster's VP Promo last year. I'm also an incoming Science Welcome Week rep uh, this year. Was, I'm also currently on the MSU um, SRA caucus, which is like a student representative assembly. Um, I was also a woman in STEM mentor. Um, I'm also a McMaster Science Society mentor. And some of my hobbies include playing guitar. I like hiking, camping. I've been learning how to skateboard this summer. Um, and I love playing spike ball. <laughs> That's it. That's exciting. Um, Kelly? Sorry, you were frozen for me a little right, bit. Yeah. Um, hey, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure if that was just me. But anyway, so hi, everybody. My name is Kelly. Um, I just finished my fourth year of material science and engineering. Um, the reason why I'm not graduating this year is because I'm doing my program in five years. So I still have two years left. I'm currently on internship um, for 16 months at a company called Westbrook Greenhouse Systems as a manufacturing intern. Um, some of my highlights, I, I've done one research term during the summer with within the materials department studying um, the effects of different process parameters on microstructure of selectively laser melted in Canal 625. Um, I was a TA last year for the engineering course, The Pivot, if you guys have heard of it. Um, it's called Engineering 1P13, and that was a lot of fun. I was on the McMaster Baja racing team for three years, and I was the controls captain for one year. 
And I was also a student ambassador for McMaster um, in engineering and some of my hobbies include playing piano and I love training Muay Thai recreationally. Thank you, Kelly. Kiana? Hi everyone, I'm Kiana and I just finished my first year of the Integrated Business and Humanities program. It's a very long name, yes, I know. Uh, and I am a green suit representative for DeGroote this year and I'm also a part of Fearless Minds, which is a mental health initiative at McMaster. And I'm part of the McMaster Smiley Student Association. And during my free time, I love to play piano, sing, and uh, I like to inspire people. So I do all of that on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in any of that, check it out. We love the plugs. <laughs> all right. Um, so just going over our agenda for a panel discussion, we'll have something to start off, some academic questions, internships, clubs, ECs. We'll go into residence and end off with financial aid. And of course, we, have, we still have the Q&A section at the end. Um, so to start off, why did you choose McMaster? Um, maybe we'll start with Fiona. Sure. Um, so I visited the campus and I thought it was very homey. Um, it's just like a personal feeling because um, my sister actually goes to Western and I thought that the campus was huge. Um, but our campus is actually much smaller. Um, and I wrote down like you can walk from one end of the campus to the other end in literally 15 minutes. So you don't have to like bus your classes, which I know Western does have to sometimes. Um, and I just felt that it was very tight knit. Like I met a lot of friends here. Everyone's very friendly. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I felt that way too. That's also why I love McMaster. Um, Kelly? Mine, as you can see, it's also very, very similar. For me, it was the time that I stepped on to the McMaster campus during May at Mac. And it's like Fiona said, it's something that just kind of clicks and it's very internal and you can't really explain it very well, but you just feel at home and everybody seems so friendly and supportive even before you've met all of them. And that's what I really, really like about Mac. Yeah, for sure. Um, Kiana, I don't know if you guys have any more to add, but <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, no, I definitely have to agree with what everyone else said. Um, for me, I think the community is definitely awesome. I, even though I had first year online, like I was still able to sense that feeling of community and that feeling of friendliness uh, the second I approached McMaster for the first time before the pandemic and before I even went to the school. So um, yeah, and on top of that, it also has IBH and there's no other program like that anywhere. So I love it. Yeah, for sure. It'll definitely be exciting for you when you go in for second year. Um, Alyssa? Yeah, so exactly the same as the rest of the panelists, but I also wanted to add, since I was in the life science gateway, um, it allowed me to explore different types of sciences, and um, I wasn't exactly sure what type of science I wanted to do. So especially having first year such a wide range of electives and courses you have to take, it allowed me to experience almost every single one of them, and then I was able to pick which one I really wanted to focus on in my second year which I found to be a really good advantage because I came in wanting something else and I let, I, I'm now here with a different path. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what do you wish you knew before coming to McMaster? Um, maybe Alyssa can start this one off. Sure, so um, I, I know we touched on this before if you were there, but we talked about, you know, like writing notes and um, learning styles. And I would say that I wish I knew that it was okay to switch and like, it was okay to explore different types of learning styles because um, in high school, I was really a note taker by hand and writing everything by hand, which I knew that um, I wanted to continue because I thought it really worked well, but in university, it just did not work out that way. And a lot of it's very content heavy. So you do have to write a lot. So I ended up switching the way I study. Um, and it was a really lot of trial and error. So first semester, I was really just trying to find out what works best for me. And then second semester is where I really focused on what I found worked. And um, yeah, so that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, and it changes between courses too, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Fiona? Um, kind of just echoing what Alyssa said, I think 
first year is really a time where you get to learn like what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And it's fine if like stuff doesn't work for you because it is a really big jump from, you know, I'm sorry, from high school. Um, but one thing I will add is like, I wish someone told me the importance of taking care of yourself, like mentally and physically, like TMI, but I literally gained 15 pounds in first year because I was like eating so much. I had a meal card. I was like swiping at like 1 a.m. in the morning. I was like drinking coffee um, and I wasn't working out. So that really took a toll on my grades as well because I wasn't taking care of myself. So I really wish someone was like, work out, try to eat as healthy as you can and just have a sleep schedule. I know it's really difficult when you're on res and you're around a lot of friends, but just make sure to take care of yourself and set some time aside um, just to focus on that. But yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I say that all the time, but I'm still being a hypocrite. Um, Kelly? Yeah, for me personally, I would say, like, I wish somebody told me that every everything doesn't always work out the way you want it to and maybe you hear that but you don't really think about it till it really happens to you and just to give an example here I'm taking six years to finish my degree because I'm doing an extra year to reduce my course load just to prioritize my mental health after first year engineering when I realized that it, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm I'm any less intelligent that I am but I just really wanted to be able to enjoy the courses that I'm taking and just taking care of myself and there really is no downside to it sure I'm taking a little bit longer but you do what you need to do and just enjoy your time while you're here yeah I feel that so much like taking one course off can actually help you learn so much more yeah yeah I mean what I wish I would have known going into first year kind of echoing what everyone else said is just being more understanding and kind to myself right like I put so much stress on grades and it's important to see grades as more of a learning experience and understanding that you will get a bad grade but that doesn't mean you're a bad student and that's it it doesn't mean anything you're bound to get a bad grade it just happens it's something you have to live with but your mental health should be your first priority. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of people go into first year getting bad grades, so I think that's something that's collectively shared. Um, so how is the social life environment and culture like at McMaster? Um, we'll start off again with Alyssa. Yeah, so um, like a sub question that a lot of people ask is like how competitive McMaster is and like um, that type of realm. And especially in gateways, it can be competitive. Um, however, there is, again, as we mentioned before, a sense of community. So um, competitiveness does occur because it is a gateway program. So you're comp competing for specializations in second year. Um, but I wouldn't be crazy focused on, you know, getting perfect grades because, again, you mentioned sometimes it doesn't work out the way you hoped but it's okay, you can keep pushing on and create different plans throughout that. So it's not something you have to really understand. And a lot of profs are also very understanding. So if you come with them to concerns and ask them about what something different that you can try out to help improve your grades, they will be very understanding and try to help you also in guiding you to different ways. And also TAs, um, the asking them lecture questions, uh, concept questions you weren't really understanding in lecture can give you different understanding of the same concept in a different way. Yeah, for sure. I think they especially like it when people like actively reach out for help. Um, Fiona? Um, yeah, I think LifeSci is probably one of the more competitive programs because there's so many kids. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of friendly competition in terms of like p other people like pushing you to do better, which is which is good. I think healthy competition is good. Um, but there's a, definitely a line there. Um, and in terms of your social life at McMaster, it's really what you make out of it. So there's a lot of things to do, a lot of clubs on campus that you can explore. And I know a lot of people say Hamilton is like the armpit of Ontario, but honestly, I've learned to love Hamilton. It's a very cute city. Um, there's a lot to do downtown. Um, you get a free bus pass. We'll probably talk about it later, but you can go anywhere. Um, there's a really cute like area called West Sale where you can like eat with friends and just chill. Um, but yeah, I, I really love Hamilton. I'm actually here right now, um, but there's a lot to do on campus and you just have to like step outside of your comfort zone and really make friends um, and really find that sense of community because it is there um, and it's out there for you. So yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Like what Kiana said before, you got to be open minded. Um, Kelly. I think Chloe's frozen. Yeah, sorry, yeah. my Wi-Fi is a bit spotty sometimes. Um, oh, yeah, that, Chloe, go. <laughs> yeah, I'll go. Um, it, it really, if you haven't picked up on it yet, uh, we really love our community here at Big Master. Um, it really is true, and I think as you can see from even different programs all across the board. I, I'm in engineering. We have life sci and different science programs. Um, sorry if I missed out on one, but you can just see like everybody's very supportive here and very friendly and that that's a huge thing here at McMaster for social life and culture wise um and like Fiona has already said like the environment's fantastic you you hear negative things about Hamilton but if you really dig deep and and look at different spots like it's the waterfall capital of the world or something and everybody goes to waterfall if you go to Mac it's kind of standard <laughs> um, or even coots on campus or just different little spots on campus so you'll find you really find at home and can just enjoy yeah I'm ashamed to say that I have not been to any of them yet but <laughs> I will soon Kiana Chloe you're definitely missing out with those waterfalls but um yeah I do agree with what Kelly and Fiona said I think Hamilton gets a really bad reputation. And although I've only been there a few times, there's actually many parts of the city, not even just Westdale, but even like the city itself that is like quite beautiful and picturesque. So I think people need to like realize that there is a lot of beauty in the city. And in terms of McMaster in itself, I know I've already kind of touched on this, but like the first time I visited campus, like I automatically fell in love with the place because people were so kind and so friendly and super outgoing. So, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. So, I mean, because of that, that kind of allowed me to gravitate towards going to McMaster. So I think that's another thing to look forward to in terms of the culture. Everyone's super friendly and uh, just amazing people are at McMaster. I think we can probably have like an hour long panel on the community at McMaster and Hamilton because it's so great. <laughs> All right, um, so jumping into academics, what are some specific bird courses um, for first years and some notable professors that um, we should take note of? Um, let's start off with Kiana this time. Sure. Yeah. So during first year, all of my courses were actually chosen for me. Um, same thing with second year, just because of the program that I'm in. But if you do happen to take an accounting course, Dr. Imad Muhammad, he is an icon. And I highly stress that you try and get a course with him. So that's all I have to say in regards to that. Amazing. Thank you. Um, Kelly? For me, I listed two profs there. Um, that are really noble for me. They just had really great lectures and really memorable lectures. And you can tell those professors go off the textbook and they really talk about their own experiences and they show their own examples as opposed to just copying a textbook, which I always find very valuable. Um, and some professors that I haven't really mentioned on that point, but if you are in engineering and you take engineering 1P13, there are many, many great profs there. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Thank you, um, Fiona. Um, yeah, I just put down like some of my favorite bir bird courses from first year. I took Psych 1 XO3 with Dr. Kim and then Enviro Psy 1 CO3 taught by Luke Bernier, a sweetie of a professor. I'm doing my seminar with him this year, so he's he's great. Um, and there's like other upper year bird courses that I won't like if you want to know, you can DM me and I'll tell you all of them. But yeah. Thank you, Alyssa. Yeah, um, <laughs> even though I didn't write down Enviro Psy, I definitely agree with that one. Um, I took Innovate 1X03 during the spring, but I definitely recommend it with Dr. Owen. He is like the most outgoing prof I think I've met so far. Um, it's a little bit of a business course, so especially if you're in like life sciences and you're really into kind of like an interest with entrepreneurship, it was definitely a course I'd recommend. And then um, obviously I may be a little biased because I'm in TMD, but Psych 1X03 and Psych 1X03, um, they're very memorable for me. Um, with Dr. Kim and Dr. Kadia. And then of course, Notorious, um, for of course, I think everyone would call this the full science on AO3. Um, yeah, I don't think I have to really touch on that because I think a lot of people do know about it, but it's definitely a bird course. 
Yeah, you guys are gonna you're gonna have to fight for these courses. <laughs> um, next, how was your program in terms of difficulty, and how should high school students prepare for the summer before? Um, let's start with Fiona again. Um, in terms of preparing for it. This might be like weird to say, but honestly, enjoy your summer as like a student that's going into university. You're not going to get a lot of breaks going forward. And I think especially if most of you are like moving out um, from your house and like living on res and stuff like that, you're not going to see your family for a long time. So spend time with them. Um, uh, yeah. And just like relax, have, have fun with friends. I know like restrictions are lifting. So go out, have fun. Um but in terms of difficulty, again, like the life science entry program is pretty competitive and pretty heavy, in my opinion, in first year. But if you put in the work and if you like ask for help when you need it, then you'll quickly see changes in your grades. And like, again, like some people mentioned, like you're bound to get bad marks or you're bound to like fail some midterms. And that's fine. Like the first year is a time where you have to learn more about yourself and what works for you. Right. So if you get a 60 on your midterm, everyone's getting a 60 so it's fine um but just work to learn how to work harder sorry work smarter and not work harder that's yeah that's the same but yeah. yeah it's good um kelly i totally agree with fiona on enjoying your summer and just spending time with your family and all that um but yeah speaking a little bit more on my program and engineering i would say you know engineering you, you hear it's it's not an easy program but the thing that really we're, we're all here at the end of the day, even if you fail midterm, I failed a course in first year, if I'm being honest here, and I'm still here in fourth year, like everybody makes it through, you just have a, a group, a group of support that, you know, if you're not doing so well, they're able to help you out, help you understand things, help you just take care of yourself. And with that, I think just having that support group, even if your courses are really difficult, when you're all in it together, you're able to figure things out a lot easier. And like I said, eventually everything works out and you'll end up where you're meant to. Yeah, that sounds nice. Um, Kiana? Yeah, I think for my program, there was a good amount of coursework, um, but I think a lot of the stress I had put on myself. So I think that could have been avoided. Um, and just like everyone else has said already, enjoy your summer and, you know, focus on working smart, not hard. But also remember, like, if you get an acceptance letter into university, you've made it right. You have to give yourself a pat on the back and realize I made it into university. Like, like, I mean, you know, it's, it's a big accomplishment, right? And knowing that you've been able to do that, you will be able to survive and like making it into university is like just the first step in itself. So you're already, you've already checked that off. Right. And, um, you're stronger than you think and you're smarter than you think. So I know everyone's going to do awesome. If you just believe in yourself. Definitely sounds like a motivational TikTok. <laughs> Thank you. Kiana. Um, okay. Uh, oh, this is a very popular question. Um, what is the difference between life sciences and health sciences? Um, I'm not sure if Alyssa is still here. Maybe Fiona wants to start this one off. I don't uh, really sure. have health science here right now, <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah, we don't have any health side kids here, so I can't speak on their program, but I do have a lot of friends in health side. Um, but if you're like worried about, oh, I'm not in health side, like I can't do like stuff that's in medicine, that is false. Um, I think pr both programs have their pros and cons, but there is, I think there is a stigma at Mac, like if you didn't get into health side or like vice versa, but I think both programs are really solid programs and you guys should be proud of where you are now. Um, but in terms of like courses and stuff, I mentioned here that like in life side, we take a lot of like uh, intro like science courses like chem, we take biophysics, calculus and psych and that's just required of our first year. But in health side, I know a lot of my friends took like inquiry based courses where you you like talk to your classmates and the class sizes are much smaller and they have a much smaller program. So there's pros and cons. Um, there's really like no good and bad to say about it about it right now. But yeah, you guys should be proud of where you are now. Yeah, life size tough, by the way. 
Um, Alyssa, anything you want to add? Yeah, um, I would just say like, even just how it's taught, like the course, how it's taught are very different, but there are open courses to life size students, like general students. So like, if you are interested in like that type of learning, um, you can definitely take a course from like the health side department and even in the future in like upper years, you can totally take um, health side courses. So um, even if you are in life science, it doesn't mean you can't take any health side courses. So you can definitely experience that as well. Yeah, for sure. All right, moving on to internship clubs and ECs. Um, what kind of extracurriculars should people consider joining? Um, Alyssa, maybe you want to start, start us off? Yeah, so I mentioned before side section. Um, so that's actually run by Kim Yusuf. Um, he's my um, producer and I'm the assistant producer this year, about last year and this year. Um, so we just had a bunch of professors from a bunch of different universities, including the state. So like we had some um, from UCLA, um, we had a bunch at McMaster, we had a bunch at U of T, even like um, pediatricians, doctors, um, researchers, it was really a big bunch of science um, professionals come in and just talk about what they do. If you can find us um, online, if you just search science section and find a bunch of our podcasts, I'd give it a listen. Definitely cool. Um, and also, I mentioned Hosa McMaster. Um, it was kind of just a thing that I took my medical terminology. It's called Classics 2M23 at McMaster. And I really enjoyed it. So I decided to um, join Hosa for it um, to learn more. So those are two of my interesting um, clubs that I joined University of Virginia. Thank you. Um, Fiona, you want to share? Um, uh, sure. I went over this in my intro already, but I didn't join any clubs in first year and I didn't have like research in first year as well. So don't feel pressured to like have to sign up for everything like right when you like step foot into Mac, like you can take a year to like learn how you function, how to live alone, how to like do your laundry and stuff like that. So don't feel pressured to like sign up for clubs right away. But I did join like these clubs listed. I won't go through it again, but like I joined last year. So a lot of like what I did was from like second year beyond. But I did do a lot of sports in my first year. Like I joined intramurals with friends, which is like a really like chill um, not really competitive, like sports league that we have, but I play softball, volleyball, and basketball with my friends. So that was really cool. But yeah. Yeah, I know there's like a pretty tight knit sports scene at Mac. Um, Kelly? Yeah, like Fiona mentioned a lot of it during my intro as well. But I would say join extracurriculars that make you happy or interest you and just things that like anything you're interested in. Um, it's a good way to unwind and kind of learn as well. Um, and meet new people. So for engineering specifically, if you're a more hands-on person like me, definitely join a hands-on kind of team. I think that's a lot of fun and you definitely get a lot out of it that you don't normally get um, from lectures. Thank you. Um, and Kiana? Yeah, so I think the best place to look is definitely McMaster's Student Union. They actually have a huge club directory and it has over 300 clubs that are like the official McMaster clubs that you can join. But even on top of those like 300 plus clubs, there's clubs on top of that that aren't like officially ratified by McMaster Student Union. And uh, for example, Fearless Minds is one of them. I'm a part of that club. And uh, we do different uh, uh, initiatives surrounding mental health. So uh, there are lots of things you could take part of. Also for me, I'm in the DeGroote faculty. So if you're a business student or an IDH student, be sure to check out our DeGroote specific clubs because we have a lot of interesting things you could take part of in there. Oh, well, thank you. Um, and maybe going over some first year internship or research opportunities. Um, Alyssa, you want to start us off? Yeah, so first year, I didn't really have any um, internships or research opportunities. I did apply to a couple of them, but um, due to COVID, a lot of them stopped running, um, especially the on-campus ones. A lot of the profs decided not to host them for the summer spring. Um, however, I know that in PNB, we have the option um, to apply for research um, in second year, third year, and fourth year. So I'm looking forward to applying for my second year. Thank you. Uh, Fiona? 
Um, again, yeah, I didn't really do much in first year and second year, but I did a fourth month placement at Cyber Seniors last year. Um, it was a course I took, but it was basically like an organization that helped seniors learn how to use technology during the pandemic. Um, and then I'm doing a thesis this year under the Department of Health Sciences. So yeah, I think these are great opportunities to build connections and like um, be closer to professors and really reach out to them and see if they can give you reference letters and stuff like that for like post-grad stuff. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I think like a lot of people don't really get started in first year. Like it's kind of a period where like you kind of learn where everything is. Um, Kelly? Yeah, like many other people, I didn't do an internship or research um, necessarily after first year. I took some math courses um, during that time, but um, answering one of the questions kind of alongside at this point here, I think it's easy to, to feel overwhelmed or have that feeling that you're missing out on a lot, lot of opportunities because there are so many opportunities at McMaster and you think you haven't done enough. But honestly, if you're enjoying your time, then you really aren't necessarily missing out on anything, if you want to put it that way. There's always more time in the future for you to join different clubs, different teams, and just kind of selling into where you are. But um, connecting that to engineering um, research is definitely a very popular option for students to go into because you have that internal connection already and it's within McMaster. So it's easier to find a position there as opposed to finding a co-op or internship that has to do with um, outside companies that you're competing with a lot of uh, for your students. But that being said, I would definitely recommend students to still um, apply for co-ops and internships after first year. For sure. Um, Kiana? Yeah, for me, so I just finished my first year and throughout the year, uh, there were no specific opportunities that came up, but starting in January, me along with all the other students in my program were busy applying to summer internships. And let me tell you, I applied to at least 30 job applications or 30 internships, right? Either jobs or internships combined, whatever. There, there were a whole lot that I applied to that I got rejected for, okay? And I wanna stress that if you do not get an internship or you, if you do not get a summer job during your first year, that is okay. The whole thing you need to be concerned about is building your resume by attending workshops, uh, getting different designations on your, uh, on your resume and volunteering. For me, I was lucky to end up getting a summer student position, but nonetheless, if you don't secure one, that's totally okay. Again, like I was at a point where I thought, okay, maybe the summer uh, might just not be for me. And I learned to live with that. And uh, originally I thought that's how summer would carry out. And I had lots of other ideas of what I could do in the meantime when I wasn't working, which included volunteering and improving, you know, various different life skills or um, skills that I can transfer over to other subjects. So, yeah, uh, if you have any more questions about that, feel free uh, to message me later. I have yeah. lots of, uh, yeah. Um, all right. So residents, what was your residence experience like at McMaster? Um, we can start with Fiona. Um, okay, yeah, I was in Bates my first year, which is like an apartment style. Chloe's laughing because Bates has a reputation of like being the party res. Um, but yes, it was very loud all the time, very dirty in the hallways. But I enjoyed my experience, actually. I, I lived in a, an apartment kind of area where I shared a space with three other girls. So we had like four separate rooms. We had like a kitchen, a living room and one washroom, which was brutal. But um, yeah, I think I lived with like strangers. So I didn't know them coming into first year, which was really scary. But I think it was definitely a good learning experience, like learning how to live with other people that are not your family members and how, how to adjust um, and how to like speak up for yourself and like how to clean up after yourself. But yeah, definitely, if you guys, I know the cutoff for residents this year was crazy high or something like that, but don't feel bad if you didn't get your top choice or don't feel bad if you didn't get res at all. Like off-campus living is, is an option too. Um, but yeah, if, if you do get to choose a res, I recommend Mary Kai's because that's like the better version of base essentially or like um, PDCL, which is, yeah, the, the newest res on campus, which is like crazy. Like, I wish I had that, but we didn't. But yeah, Bates was 
cool a learning experience but I, I don't regret a single second of it it was really fun i'm yeah. so jealous i was at matthews oh um, no yeah it just for context matthews was like the armpit of mcmaster so then i lived in the armpit of the armpit <laughs> so kelly <laughs> you want to go next <laughs> sure. Um, very different experience from Fiona and Chloe. <laughs> um, I lived in Hedden and I had a single room, so I really lucked out because those weren't easy to come by. Um, but I loved my my res. It was, I think, the it was like the engineering building. There was another term for it. I'm not sure what, what that term is. I currently forget. But um, yeah, it was always very clean for me. Um, and oh, what I really, really loved about my room. So on top of that, it was a single room. It backed onto Coots, which is this trail that we have at Mac that's like in the backside of um, campus, away from all the traffic, all the noise. And it's beautiful. We all go there to relax and enjoy nature. And anyway, my point is it backed onto that. And I loved looking out my window and there were always deer. Um, just in the mornings yeah i would look out my window and i always saw a deer and i i love that so much yeah that's cool um we'll just try to speed through this because we're reaching um we're kind of reaching the end um how can you how do you budget your meal plan and finances um maybe kelly you want to go yeah definitely so i can talk about this is uh, pretty quick so um i recommend just eating your regular meals um maybe getting your own breakfast to save up a little bit but I ended up having quite a bit of money left over that gets carried over to your second year. But yeah, just kind of eat regularly if you're eating a healthy amount for each meal. Fiona, do you have anything to add? Um, not really, but the fact that like I also had a lot of money left over. And if you like don't have a lot of money, you can always add money to your card. So don't like feel like you have to like not eat, you know, just swipe your card. Yeah, please use your money. I'm in fourth year. I still have money. Um, Oh, we still have another question. Getting around campus. Um, Kiana, you want to start this one? Yeah, so I'll just talk really quickly. Uh, it's actually really easy to get around campus on foot. It's like a 10 minute walk, I believe, across the whole campus. Uh, and it also has a go bus terminal located right on campus. So if you need to get uh, to the school by go bus, then that works out perfectly for you. Yeah, wonderful. I think that also kind of covers what Fiona and Kelly said. There's also Sobe bikes. Um, we have rental. So, uh, Hamilton is very bike friendly, um, which is great. Uh, lastly, we have financial aid. What are some resources that we have at Mac offering financial aid? Um, maybe Alyssa? Yeah, so if you go on Mosaic, you'll find um, something called Award Spring. And it has a bunch of scholarships that you can apply to and like their eligibility. So I definitely recommend starting there. But also my first year, we didn't have this. I think it's just something that they added last year, like in the middle of the school year. So it's kind of odd. But um, I also use Scholarships Canada to find a few. And like um, a lot of them require essays. So if you are a good essay writer, um, definitely some good options there. Yeah. Um, and there are also some other resources listed here. Um, maybe like, Award Spring, like she mentioned, uh, Scholarship Canada, um, Scholarship Scholar Tree, and also a student work program um, that Fiona mentioned. And this is time for our q and I though we have a lot of questions in the chat. Um, let me take a look. Oh, I thought, I think, I'm not sure if this was answered, but um, sorry, I don't want to butcher your name. Akila asked, I know some universities provide workshops. Are there any provided in McMaster and are any that you would recommend? So I guess I can take this one. Um, so if you go on to Oscar Plus, I believe you can access it through Mosaic. They have a bunch of workshops. It could be like um, granted towards your program or just a general like workshop. Um, and you can just register and um, sign up and go. Um, I know that there's a writing program or workshop that they do. 
um, I heard someone in social science that my friend did it and she enjoyed it. So if you are like working to um, improve writing skills, um, that's definitely one you can check out. I'm not sure about any other one since I didn't personally use it. Yeah, um, you'll definitely find a lot on Oscar Plus. My schedule is always filled with everything because I'm signing up for all the workshops. Um, but there's a lot that McMaster offers. Um, our sports teams for people who are good at sports and more advanced. I didn't do sports in middle school and high school, so our intramural is my only option for sports. I can answer that. I literally have no skill and I literally joined <laughs> basketball, volleyball, softball. It's like, it's very chill and you can like play with people that you like, like playing with. So it's like very chill. Like I would recommend it. It's a good way to like get your mind off like schoolwork. So yeah. yeah. Um, we have a question from David. How would you guys evaluate McMaster's academic offerings? Um, having browsed through the undergraduate website, I think he was kind of asking about like any interdisciplinary opportunities that Mac has. Uh, I can take this one again. Um, so I'm actually thinking about minoring um, in community engagement and that's an interdisciplinary minor. Um, so that basically just means that I'm taking a bunch of courses from different faculties that have a common theme. So the theme is community engagement. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be from a specific department. It's kind of just all jumbled in there. So you go to social science, war, uh, social work, um, innovation, um, sustainability. Um, so it's a great way to like get um, a feel for different program, uh, different um, departments and finding different courses that you might have not have thought of taking before. Um, and if you take Science 103, they also talk about this a lot. Um, so if you're interested in that and you're taking the course, you'll definitely hear a lot more about that. Thank you. Um, and Hira is asking if it's possible to get into research in the first year um, of summer or, or the summer after first year. I think we kind of touched on that, um, but if anyone wants to add anything. Yeah, I can touch on that a little bit. Um, yeah, definitely after first year, a lot of students go into research, like I said, um, once you reach out to your profs, um, you can directly talk to your profs and, and study and research what their area of research is. And if you're interested and just shoot them an email, just, just asking if they have any opportunities and go from there. Hey, um, do the libraries have old exams? I actually don't know. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. <laughs> I don't think so, right? No, no. You no. can find yeah. it from like upper year friends. <laughs> yeah, you probably have to like go online yeah. for that or something. Um, what is your favorite and least favorite thing about Mac? I think maybe Kiana, you didn't get to answer the previous questions if you want to answer this one. Yeah, sure. Favorite thing about Mac? The people, uh, my program, least favorite. I haven't discovered that yet. <laughs> All right, um, okay, so it's 9 p.m., it's 9.01. Um, so we're gonna end off on this question. Um, each of you can take like 20 seconds to answer it. What, in your opinion, is the biggest Mac life hack? Just unmute when you're ready. I put it in the chat already, but I literally said the, <laughs> the best washrooms on campus. Because if you live off campus, you need to know which washrooms are single user and like which one's nice to use on campus. So which ones? <laughs> oh, um, like my secret spot is literally like the third floor of, um, I literally forgot what the building was called, but you guys can message me off. She just doesn't want to give it away. <laughs> <laughs> and COVID does that too. Very yeah. Sad. Yes. <laughs> anyone else have a life hack to share? Um, go to TA office hours. I think that a lot of people like sleep on them because um, they think that's like really compact and busy or like they might not be sure of like what type of questions they might have. But even if you just drop in with no particular questions, something will come to mind and definitely have something to ask. Um, also like it could be quite busy during um, test weeks but other than that usually whenever I drop in there'd be like no one and you can just really use that to your advantage so I definitely recommend to your office hours and prop office hours for that matter 
Yeah, for sure. Anyone else? I guess I have one last one if we have time for that. Um, a lot of the times in your schedule, if you have an, an hour in between, I know a lot of people, they just kind of relax and do nothing. And by all means, that's always a good way to kind of relax and unwind as well. But I found that a lot of those times, because it's an hour, it's kind of awkward if you can't go back to your res and you're wasting time just getting from place to place that in that hour, you can actually get a lot of stuff done and just check things off your list as you go, so. Yeah, for sure. All right, um, so that ends off our webinar for today. I'm really sorry if I didn't get to your question. Um, if you do have any more questions, you can feel free to contact our panelists. They'd be more than happy to um, chat with you and answer any questions that you might have. Um, Leap also has um, our coffee chats um, where you can contact and like ask our mentors for help and schedule coffee chats with us. Um, and yeah.